Scientists have developed a new mind-boggling phase of matter that behaves as though it possesses two time dimensions. By exposing the qubits of a quantum computer to laser pulses that were quasi-rhythmic and were based on the Fibonacci sequence, physicists were able to demonstrate a method of storing quantum information that is less likely to result in errors. A fascinating phase of matter that has never been seen before has been created by physicists by beaming a laser pulse sequence that was inspired by the Fibonacci sequence at atoms that were contained within a quantum computer. The physicists stated in the journal Nature that the phase has the benefits of two time dimensions, despite the fact that there is still only one unique flow of time. This mind-boggling quality provides a very desirable benefit which is that information that is kept in the phase is far more safeguarded against errors in comparison to other configurations that are being employed in quantum computers. As a result of this, the information may survive for a significantly longer period of time without being corrupted, which is an essential step toward the realization of the potential of quantum computing, as stated by Philip Dumitrescu, the primary author of the study. According to Dumitrescu, who worked on the project as a research fellow at the Flatiron Institute's Center for Computational Quantum Physics in New York City, the approach's revolutionary use of additional time dimension is a whole different way of thinking about phases of matter. I've been working on these theories for more than five years, and it's thrilling to see them actually come to be realized in tests. The theoretical aspect of the study was directed by Dumitrescu in collaboration with Andrew Potter of the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Romain Vasseur of the University of Massachusetts in Amherst, and Ajesh Kumar of the University of Texas in Austin. Experiments were run at Quantinuum, which is located in Broomfield, Colorado, and were performed on a quantum computer. Brian nayan was the project leader. The team's quantum computer is powered by 10 atomic ions of the element ytterbium, which function as the computer's workhorses. Laser pulses can be used to manipulate or measure each individual ion within an ion trap because the electric fields that are produced by the ion trap individually hold and control each ion. Each of these atomic ions serves as what is known in the field of physics as a quantum bit, sometimes known as a qubit. In contrast to traditional computers, which store information as a series of bits, each of which can either be a 1 or a 0, qubits, which are employed by quantum computers, make use of the peculiarities of quantum physics in order to store even more information. A qubit, much like Schrodinger's cat, can be either a 0 or a 1, or it can be a superposition of both of these states at the same time. This is referred to as the superposition state. This extra information density and the manner in which qubits interact with one another holds the promise of enabling quantum computers to solve computational problems that are inaccessible to conventional computers. As with the cat in Schrodinger's box, there's a significant problem. Interacting with a qubit locks its fate. Additionally, there is no requirement that this engagement be done on purpose. Even if you have all of the atoms under strict control, they can lose their quantumness by talking to their environment, heating up, or interacting with objects in ways you didn't expect, adds Dumitrescu. This can happen even if you keep all of the atoms under tight control. In practice, experimental equipment has several sources of error that can decrease coherence after only a few laser pulses, the author writes. These errors can cause degradation of the coherence. In light of this, the task at hand is to make qubits more resilient. In order for physicists to accomplish this, they can make use of symmetries, which are essentially qualities that are resistant to alteration. A snowflake is an example of a rotational symmetry since it maintains its appearance even after being turned through 60 degrees. The atoms can be given time symmetry in one way by having laser pulses fired at them in a rhythmic pattern. This strategy is useful, but Dumitrescu and his colleagues couldn't help but wonder whether they could improve upon it. Therefore, instead of simply having one time symmetry, they aimed to add two by utilizing laser pulses that were ordered but did not repeat themselves. 
taking into consideration something else that is ordered but does not repeat, such as quasi-crystals, is the most effective strategy to comprehend their methodology. The structure of a typical crystal is repetitive and orderly, much like the honeycomb pattern formed by hexagonal cells. A quasi-crystal still possesses order, but its patterns are unique each time they are observed. The tiling pattern known as Penrose is one illustration of this. Crystals that exist in higher dimensions can be projected, or squashed down, into lower dimensions to create quasi-crystals. This fact alone is mind-boggling. These higher dimensions can even extend beyond the three dimensions that constitute physical space. For example, a 2D Penrose tiling is just a slice that has been projected from a 5D lattice. The development of a quasi-crystal in time rather than space was suggested by Dumitrescu, Vassar, and Potter in 2018. This was in reference to the qubits. The researchers devised a quasi-periodic laser pulse regimen that is based on the Fibonacci sequence. A periodic laser pulse would alternate A, B, A, B, A, B, etc. But their system uses the Fibonacci sequence. In this kind of sequence, the value of each individual element of the series is equal to the total of the values of the two parts that came before it. A, A, B, A, B, A, A, B, A, A, B, A, B, A, A, B, A, B, A, etc. This orderly arrangement, much like a quasi-crystal, does not contain any repeating elements. In addition to this, it is a two-dimensional pattern that has been compressed into a single dimension, much like a quasi-crystal. This flattening of space-time should potentially produce two temporal symmetries rather than simply one. A hypothetical additional temporal dimension provides the system with an additional symmetry, although this dimension does not exist. However, since real-world quantum computers are extremely complex experimental systems, it was unclear if the gains predicted by the theory would hold true in real-world qubits. The experimentalists validated the theory by putting it through its paces on the Quantinuum's quantum computer. They shot bursts of laser light at the qubits in the computer at regular intervals, as well as in a pattern that was based on the Fibonacci numbers. The qubits located at either end of the 10-atom array were the primary focus of attention, since that is where the researchers anticipated seeing the new phase of matter that experienced two temporal symmetries at the same time. The edge qubits maintained their quantum state for almost one and a half seconds during the periodic test, which is already an outstanding length of time considering the qubits were interacting vigorously with one another. Because of the quasi-periodic pattern, the qubits maintained their quantum state throughout the entirety of the experiment, which lasted approximately 5.5 seconds. According to Dumitrescu, this is due to the fact that the additional temporal symmetry provides a higher level of protection. He claims that there is a sophisticated evolution that occurs as a result of this quasi-periodic sequence, which eliminates all of the flaws that are present on the edge. Because of that, the edge maintains its quantum mechanical coherence for a significantly longer period of time than you would anticipate. Even if the findings show that the new phase of matter is capable of serving as long-term quantum information storage, the researchers still need to figure out how to properly integrate the phase with the computational aspect of quantum computing. According to Dimitrescu, we have this direct application that has a lot of potential but we need to figure out how to incorporate it into the calculations. That's an outstanding issue that we're looking at right now. Thanks for watching the video to the end. Let us know in the comments what you think about this discovery. Did you find this video interesting? Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more. We have another interesting video ready for you. Click on it and we'll take you on the next space adventure. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this.